Hi there. I'm going to show you how to run a Monte Carlo simulation. We're going to use a software package called AtRisk. It's not the only software package that can be used to set up and run Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, however, it's one that I use a lot because it's highly functional uh, and it's a good one to demonstrate the overall process on. So the first thing that you'll need to do is to find at risk on the computer that you're using, assuming that it's been purchased and installed. So we can find at risk by doing a search in the start menu and here it is. I'm running version 7.5 on my computer. And you would have noticed that what happened then was an Excel spreadsheet opened. At risk is in fact just an add-in to Excel. So once I press close here, you'll notice there's a new tab that's appeared called at risk on the Excel uh, tab list. And this new tab has the various functions in it, some of which we'll have a look at and use uh, for setting up and running a Monte Carlo simulation today. So what I will want to do is to think about a question that I would like answered, a numerical question for which I have input data to calculate a final result, but that input data might uh, include some degree of variability and or uncertainty. In this case, it will be mainly uncertainty that we're, that we're looking at. I came up with a very simple question for us to be able to answer. Uh, and the question is, if I'm organizing this year's Faculty of Engineering Christmas party, I will need to think about how many party pies to buy for the Christmas party. Uh, and as a con since party pies come in packets of around about 20, I'll need to think about how many packets of party pies I should buy for this year's Christmas party. So let's type in that question. How many packets of party pies should I buy for the Christmas party. Okay, so in order to answer that question, how many party pies will I need to buy? First of all, I'll need to think about, for example, how many people do I expect to attend the Christmas party? So how many people will attend the party? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I can estimate. I could look at how many people came to last year's party and a few years before that. I could see if there are trends, if the number's growing or shrinking, or I could take an average of previous years. Let's say that I come up with a rough number of around about 100 people coming to the Christmas party. Next question I will want to answer is how many pies per person? How many party pies on average or in total will each person consume at the Christmas party. So how many party pies will each person eat? Okay, I don't know the answer to that question. Let's say it's five. So therefore, using that information, I could calculate how many party pies in total will I need to buy. So how many Sorry, terrible typing. How many party pies will I need to buy? And you know how to answer that question using uh, X, an Excel spreadsheet. You would say equals the number of people attending the party multiplied by the number of pies per person. And in this case, that's 500 pies. Uh, I'm thinking about how many packets of party pies I will need to buy. So the next question is, how many pies are in a packet? How many party pies in a packet? And let's assume that it's not uniform, that uh, packets are packed according to mass and party pies vary somewhat in size and mass. Uh, but we know that a roughly average number um, of party pies per packet is, let's say, 20. Okay, and then I can use that information to work out how many packets do I need to buy. And that, again, is a simple calculation. I could think about uh, the number of party pies I'll need to buy divided by the number of party pies per packet. So equals 500 
divided by 20 will give me 25 packets. Okay, so this calculation currently I've done uh, in a way that we would call a deterministic calculation. I've got a single number. I've, it more or less assumes that I know those values. 100 people at the party, 5 pies per person. Uh, but you know that that's not real. In fact, people will vary quite a lot in terms of the number of pies uh, they will eat. And I don't necessarily know that there are necessarily going to be exactly 100 people at the party. So this is where we can change some of these uh, deterministic values into stochastic values, values for which uh, we can incorporate variability and uncertainty. Okay, so let's start by deleting this 100 and I'm going to use this function over here called define distributions for which I'm going to put in a distribution that describes the uncertainty around the number of people that may be attending the party. In this case, I might use a normal distribution. So I cl click on select on normal distribution and then select distribution. Uh, now I can define my normal distribution in terms of the key parameters that are used to define normal distribution, which are the mean and the standard deviation. So let's say I make the mean around 100 people and maybe that standard deviation could be 10. I could have a much smaller number for a standard deviation which would tighten up the distribution so ranging from about 97 to 102 of course it goes to plus or minus infinity uh, but, but most of the data between 97 and 100 um, or I could have a much wider distribution I could have 20 for example uh, we, we'll put it on 10 Oops. like a reasonable estimate. So what I'm saying here is that roughly I'm expecting around about a hundred people to attend the Christmas party. Uh, these two lines here are the fifth percentile and the 95th percentile. So this is telling me that there is only a, a as far as I understand I would expect there's only a five percent chance that less than 83 people will attend the Christmas party. So this part of the probability density down here. And there's only a 5% chance that more than 116 people will attend the party. Of course I could define that uh, any way I wanted to. So let's go with that. Okay, what about the number of people who eat party pies? I'll delete the 5. I'll go, sorry, the number of party pies eaten per person. Uh, in this case I might choose a log normal distribution. I'm just choosing different types of distributions partially because I think that they will better fit uh, the type of data that I'm modeling uh, but also to demonstrate a few variable types of distributions to you. So I'll select a log normal distribution. I might say uh, that people might eat on average five party pies. Here we have a standard deviation of 10. So this is showing that um, there could be a couple of really greedy people that are eating 20 party pies, but they're very few and far between. Most people are actually eating closer to one party pie. Let's um, broaden that out a little bit. I'll, I'll change that standard deviation maybe to a three. And have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so here we have a, a log normal distribution which does not go below zero, which is one of the useful features of a log normal distribution. You can't eat less than zero party pies. Uh, many people are eating around about two or three party pies and there might be a couple of really hungry people at the party that might be using the party pies for dinner and eat 10 or maybe 12 of those party pies but th there are very few of those people. So let's go with that. I think that looks like a reasonable uh, distribution of the number of party pies eaten per person. So we click OK. Uh, how many party pies will I need to buy? That calculation still holds, but now we're going to use this second tab here to add an output. So we can look at the variability. We can look at uh, the probability density function that takes into account the uncertainty in the two parameters that we used to calculate the number of party pies that we'll need to buy. So I'm get, I've clicked on add output. So here we can give a name to that output. The default name there is fine, so we'll just press OK. Uh, now we have the number of party pies in a packet. Previously I put 20. Let's delete that. 
uh, and we'll define a distribution. In this case, I might use a beta general distribution. It's a useful distribution that has very defined upper and lower bounds as opposed to a normal distribution which runs to plus and minus infinity. There are four parameters that are used to define a beta general uh, distribution. Uh, the two most important are the minimum and the maximum. Obviously I don't want minus 10. Uh, let's say if I'm assuming an average of around about 20 party pies in a packet, the smallest we might expect to see is perhaps 17. Uh, and the largest, uh, let's say 23. So we'll have a distribution that looks like this. And you can play around with these alpha and beta parameters, uh, which will change the shape um, of that, that distribution. But uh, let's leave it as it was on um, both values right on 2, because I think that looks like a reasonable distribution. So around about 20 party pies in a typical packet, could be as few as 17 or 18, could be as high as 22, 23. Okay, uh, and the number of packets I'll need to buy, in this case I want to add an output. It's a calculated value, so this is a good name for that output. How many packets do I need to buy? So we'll press OK. Okay, so to run the Monte Carlo simulation, uh, one of the important things I'll need to think about is the number of iterations of that Monte Carlo simulation. So you'll find that up here. And there are various default values. Why not go all the way and choose 100,000 iterations? Nothing lost, it doesn't take that long to, to run. So we'll choose 100,000 iterations. And then we simply press Start Simulation, and that simulation will begin. So here it is running, running through the randomly selected values. We can see the number of iterations that have been run down um, in this box at the bottom and we're starting to see some of the results. This is how many packets do I need to buy uh, being developed or simulated. Alright, now we'll close that for a moment. We'll go back and we'll have a look at some of the values. So if I want to have a look at uh, the values that I have here for how many people will attend the party, I can press this tab here, Browse Results. So by browsing results, I know exactly what this uh, probability density function should look like because I defined it. I defined it as a normal distribution and I entered in the mean and the standard deviation. So you'll remember it has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. So that that's not a surprise in that particular case. Same thing um, here when I said how many party pies will each person eat. Uh, we put in a log normal distribution. I think we had a mean of 5 uh, and we had a standard deviation of 3. Down here, we've calculated how many party pies will I need to buy. Now what I might do is just change the way that we view this so that um, what's in the screen or what's binned in, the, in these uh, Monte Carlo bins uh, is roughly just exceeding the 5th and the 95th percentile bounds. So here if I have a 5th percentile of 169 and a 95th percentile of 1078, uh, I might just click on this uh, display graph um, dialog box and I might run from a minimum of let's say zero it's practically zero to what did I say uh, so I have a thousand and seventy eight so let's put fifteen hundred um, as the uh, maximum bin and we'll get a much better visual picture it doesn't change the calculation none of the numbers have changed um, but I get a better visualization of of what we're looking at here so this says that instead of the previous number of 500 party pies I might need to buy, we could think about the likelihood of needing to buy or people consuming certain numbers of party pies. Here's the 500 down here, and that's the mean, 499.99 it was calculated as. Uh, but if we look, for example, at the median, uh, here the median is not too different, 426. Uh, in some cases the median could be quite different to the mean if we had a, quite a different shape distribution. Uh, but we could look at um, the median would tell us here 426 that half the data are below that number and half the data are above that number. So that tells us that I would if I buy four, enough packets for 426 pies then I've got pretty much an even chance of having too few or too many uh, party pies. 
if I want to be a good party pie planner and a good Christmas party planner, I might say, well, I think I probably should buy enough pies where my chances of running out, of not having enough, are less than, than 50%. So I might go up here, I might go for the 90% percentile, uh, which means that I need to have 878 pies in order to make sure 90% of the likelihood, 90% of the data for the number of pies that people will eat uh, is less than the number that I buy. I could be very conservative and buy a thousand pies. Uh, which would mean there might be only around a 5% chance uh, of, of not having enough pies. So there's lots of information that I can gather out of that distribution. In this case, it's all a function of the distribution that I defined, uh, but sometimes we can define, distrib define distributions based on very good data. Okay, uh, the number of party pies in a packet. We can browse the results. Uh, again, it's as we set up with that beta general distribution, so there are no surprises there. Finally, the number that we really are looking to calculate is the number of packets that I need to buy. So again, browse the results. I'll just change the view so that we can see a reasonable range from about the 5th to 95th percentile. So I might look at a range from 0 uh, to 100. It'd probably be a, a, a more insightful range to look at, and so I'll set that at 0 the maximum histogram being up to 100. Okay, and I get an indication of the number of packets that I need to buy. So in this case, I've got a mean of 25, the median is 21. So that's saying that if I buy 21 packets, there's a 50% chance uh, that I'll have enough and 50% chance that I won't. Or I could look further down here, maybe at the 90th percentile, which would tell me to buy 44 packets if I want to make sure that uh, there's only a 10% chance I would run out, or 54 packets if I want to ensure that there's only a 5% chance uh, that I would run out, that I would not have enough packets of, of party pies to go around. So that's a Monte Carlo simulation. That's how we can run it uh, using at risk. It's a very simple, trivial example, uh, but hopefully it's enough to get you to start playing around with the defined distributions, the add output, the number of iterations, uh, starting the simulation, and browsing the results functions. The other thing that you may like to do is to make sure that you label your axes. So you can do that uh, by again clicking on this uh, display graph options dialog box. And if you go into x axis down here, you could say number of packets. And the y-axis, people often wonder what to put for this uh, y-axis. Um, a good term to use is frequency. Frequency of a particular outcome, or the relative frequency of a particular outcome. So if we add those in, now we can right-click uh, on the graph and copy that graph. And then I could take that over to a, a Word document that I was writing a report in, uh, and I can drop that result directly onto the Word document. So these are all the steps that you can take in setting up a good Monte Carlo simulation for perhaps a more complicated question or a more pertinent question, uh, and to produce, to use data to produce a simulated result, and to be able to copy and paste that that result into your assignment report.